Okay, in this video we're going to look at a solution to problem number A2 from the 2019 Putnam exam. So let's look at the statement of the problem. In triangle ABC, we let G be the centroid and I be the center of the N circle. And also we let alpha be the angle BAC and beta equal the angle ABC. Let's suppose that IG, this line segment, from this uh, center of the N circle and the centroid, be parallel to the side AB on the triangle, and beta equals 2 times the inverse tangent of 1 third. And our goal is to find alpha. So uh, the setup that we're going to use is put all of this in the coordinate plane. So let's set B equal to... 0, 0. So B is at the origin. And then we're going to put A equal to X comma 0. So that's going to be along the X axis. And then everything else uh, will work out from there. And we'll arrive at the following picture. Okay. So here's my picture that I've made. So I have B here at the origin. <coughs> A is along this x-axis, and C is up here in the first quadrant. And furthermore, I know that the line segment from each vertex of the triangle and to the end center of uh, the triangle, in other words, the center of the end circle, it's a commonly known fact that those bisect the corresponding angles. So that means this line segment from here to here gives me beta over 2. This one gives me beta over 2, alpha over 2, and alpha over 2 because we know this whole angle here is beta. This whole angle here is alpha. Furthermore, I've put uh, my centroid right there. Notice to make this line segment um, to be parallel to this line segment down here. Now, depending on exactly what the angles are, this could be on the either so other side of I as well. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna use is the double angle formula for tangent in order to calculate this point C up here. So let's calculate tangent of beta, um, but notice tangent of beta will give us the ratio of the y coordinate of C with the x coordinate of C. And then since um, all of this setup will be equivalent for similarity of triangles, we can just like pick nice points for C based on that. So tangent of B is going to be given by the tangent of twice the arctan of one third, but then um, we can use this formula. So I'll write down what we get and then I'll remind ourselves of this formula. So this is going to be uh, two over three over one minus one over three squared. And so here we're using this formula that uh, the tangent of two theta equals two tangent of theta over one minus tan squared theta. Great. So now if you simplify this all the way down, you'll see that here you get uh, three quarters, which means that we can take um, this point up here to the, be the point four comma three. And that's because, again, this setup is going to be equivalent up to similarity of triangles. But then remember, the tangent is equal to the y-coordinate divided by the x-coordinate. So we might as well take that to be 4 over 3. Okay, good. Now the next thing that we're going to use is the fact that the centroid is equal to the sum of these points divided by the number of the points. So the centroid, in other the in other words, the point G is going to be 4 over 3 plus 0, 0 plus X over 0 divided by 3. Good. In other words, we get here, this is X uh, plus 4 over 3 comma 1 so that the y coordinate of g is 1. So now we can sketch that out in this picture as follows. So we can take this out to the y axis and we know that this uh, value is 1, which means that the y coordinate of i is also 1. 
and then we don't know what the x coordinate is yet. I'll call this x1 because we've already used the x down here, and then we can use some trigonometry, some trigonometry to calculate this x1, and we can do that um, by taking the tangent of beta over 2. So I'll clean up the board and then we'll do that. Okay, so I've cleaned up the board. Recall that uh, our point I is given by x1 comma 1. Our point G is given by x plus 4 over 3 comma 1. Then we can calculate this x1 pretty easily. We can just take the tangent of uh, beta over 2 and calculate that two ways. One, calculating this over here, notice that beta over two is gonna be arctan one-third, so we know that this is equal to one-third. Great, and then we also know that this is one over x1, one over x1, just by the fact that this point is x1 comma one, so what that tells us is that x1 equals three. So in other words, we can erase this x1 right here and write 3. So we know this point is 3 comma 1. Okay, so now uh, I'm going to erase the board and then we have one more kind of common geometric formula to work with um, before we're all set. So now we're going to use one more fact to finish it off. In other words, calculate what this x is. But now notice if we know what this x is, we can easily use that to find this angle alpha. Okay, and that is if we drop a perpendicular line from I down to here, it's a well-known fact that the end circle intersects the side of the triangle at the same point that this perpendicular line will uh, intersect the triangle, which is really good news because that tells us the radius of this n-circle. The radius of this n-circle is the length of this, but we know the y-coordinate of i is equal to 1. So in other words, the radius of the n-circle, which I'll write as r, we know that that's equal to 1. Okay, good. And then another thing that we know is there's actually a version of Heron's formula, which is usually used to calculate the area of a triangle in terms of the side lengths, but there's a version of it that you can use to calculate the uh, radius of the end circle of the triangle, and that's given by the following. So we have the radius of the end circle of the triangle is given by the square root of s times s minus a times s minus b times s minus c all over s, where s is given by a plus b plus c over 2, and then a, b, c are the side lengths. Great. So that means we can plug r equals 1 into this, and then we can calculate the side lengths in terms of um, x, and then we've got an equation for x. So let's go ahead and calculate the side lengths first. So we have the side length um, a, b equals x, so that's easy to see. We have uh, the side length uh, b, c is equal to 5. That's also equal to see, easy to see because notice we have the square root of 4 squared plus 3 squared, which is the square root of 25, which is 5. Great. And then the side length of AC is a little bit trickier, but using the distance formula, it's not too bad. We get the square root of x minus 4 quantity squared plus 9. Okay, good. So now what we'll need to do is plug these values in to A. Maybe we could call this one B. And then finally, we could call this one C. And up here, and then we'll have an equation for our uh, value X. Okay, so I'll clean up the board and then we'll do that. Okay, so it's just a bunch of algebra, like combining all of those terms together. I'll just like uh, show you that we calculate the radius one way and we get one, and then we calculate the radius via Heron's formula and we get 3x over x plus 5 plus the square root of um, x squared 
minus 8x plus 25. So that's fairly elementary to calculate all of that. It really just involves um, you know, some symbolic manipulation. Great, so now we'll set those two equations equal to each other and solve for x. So here we'll have 3x um, over this equals 1, which means that the numerator here needs to equal the denominator. So we have 3x equals x plus 5 plus the square root of x squared minus 8x plus 25. Great. But notice that's going to give us 2x minus 5 equals the square root of x squared minus 8x plus 25, like that. Now we can square both sides, and notice that's going to give us 4x squared minus 20x plus 25, and then that's going to equal x squared minus 8x plus 25. But now notice some of this stuff is going to cancel, so that's going to cancel with that. And then we can move everything over, and that's going to give us 3x squared minus 12x equals 0, which tells us that x could be 0, um, which doesn't make any sense because that means that we would have no triangle at all. It would be some degenerate triangle. Or x equals 4. But now notice, if x equals 4, that means c is right on top of a, so they share the same um, x-coordinate, which tells you that alpha equals pi over 2, and that finishes the solution.